this is going to be a video about significant digits and uh, to start off you can see that I have a beaker here with some uh, green solution which is basically food coloring and this smaller graduated cylinder and you can basically you know you can say that this smaller graduated cylinder is a lot more precise in its measurements because there are smaller increments that we can read of whereas this um, beaker right now if I were to look at the meniscus you know if I were to ask one person they could say it's about 38 milliliters and if I were to ask another person they could say it's about 40 so because of that reason it's not that accurate in its reading so the significant digits uh, significant sort of uh, figures that's what we're uh, looking at and there's some rules that we need to um, sort of remember but once you have done a lot of these ones you don't even have to memorize them because it just kind of come naturally to you so I I my advice is the best bet is just to do them and then you're gonna pick up the pattern and the rules will just kind of come into play really really easily so the first thing is like I said the rules of significant digits are best learned or practice so the first rule of significant digit is that any number is gonna be significant that means that it does mean something so if you have a one that has one significant digit if you have say 12 that's two significant digits so that's two sig figs that we can call it and then if we have let's say one two three four and that's four sig figs so any number will count as can count as significant because those are the numbers that you can actually read so the next one that's where it gets a little bit tricky is when you have zeros so number three all zeros sandwiched are significant so any zeros in between numbers are going to be significant so I have two examples here one two zero one one two point or one two point zero zero one because those zeros are sandwiched between other numbers they count as significant as well so that's pretty straightforward so that's any numbers are significant any zeros um, sandwich are significant as well so we can just throw in any example three five zero zero five or well, because these zeros are sandwiched between numbers then that means that we have five sig figs. Um, let's try another example. Let's just throw in a couple of numbers. 2.001. Uh, this because even though we have decimal uh, place here, these two zeros it looks like a happy face. And they're sandwiched between these two numbers. So that means that they are still significant. So that's four sig figs. Okay, so far so good. Uh, number four, leading zeros in the decimal are not significant. So that means that any zeros before a decimal are not going to be counted as a significant digit. So an example here that I have is point, 0 0.03. So because these zeros, they're not sandwiched between two numbers, and they're before a number, they're not going to count. So this one will just have one sig fig. Okay. Uh, another example that I have here is 0 0.00022. Even though I have a lot of zeros before numbers, doesn't matter how many zeros, if they're not sandwiched between other numbers, the zeros are not going to count. So there's just two sig figs um, for this one. Okay, and um, we can even just do point, uh, 0 0.005. Well, 0 0.005. Um, you don't even have to write the zeros because this just means five or that means that it's just one sig fig and if you do want to use decimal place so that'd be 0 0.05 that those two zeros they don't count so that's just one sig fig so so far so good uh, next one zeros after a number are not significant unless they're after decimal so here's the little trick to this one you can see these two examples this is just 120,000 that's one two and four zeros and this one is one two point zero 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 so the difference here is that these four zeros because there are no there are no decimal place they are not significant so there's just two sig figs in this one whereas this one because there is a decimal place right here those decimals count and there are six sig figs in total oops six six yeah six sig figs in total okay so to give you another example about that one you can write as many zeros oh i'm pushing the wrong button you can write as many zeros you want right this is all zero 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 but there's these zeros are not sandwiched between another number there's no number here and there are no decimals so these ones do not count so this one even though there are a lot of numbers lots of digits that's just one sig fig but if i wanted to make 
all these ones significant, then that means I have to put in decimal place. So let's put in all these zeros again. If I wanted to make this all significant, then I can put basically a decimal anywhere. So if I put a decimal here, because these zeros are after decimal and after a number, all these zeros will count. If I wanted to put the decimal somewhere farther down, such as here, that would also count too because these zeros, these two zeros are after this decimal, so they count. And since these zeros are after a number in front of decimal, they will count as well. So I don't know how many zeros I have here, but 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So that's 12 sig figs for both of these. All right, so that's how you count number of sig figs. So when we go into addition and subtraction of sig figs, uh, there is a really simple method, which is a uh, let's say this is your your um, let's see two and okay we're gonna add these okay so if we have these ones um, well what's gonna be the final sig figs how many sig figs do I have in my final answer if you were to add this in a long addition way you would have nine seven decimal six and one right sixteen point seven nine but if we want to keep our answers in the correct significant number of digits we need to do this. Align your decimal, just like what I did here, and you're going to do a cutoff. You're going to cut off the, the last digit in both of them. That includes both of them. So notice that I cut off the 9 because there is no number here. So I'm going to have that, and that's going to be where I round it off. So my answer is going to be 16.8. That's going to be my 3 sig figs because I will cut off at this number. And since it's a 9 greater than 5, I'm going to round this to 8. So another example here is let's do 23.457 plus 1.2. Okay, I'm going to add these. And notice I'm going to first chop this off. This is my last digit for both of them. I'm going to add these just like how I would do addition. That's 4 and 2. And since I cut off right here, I'm going to round this number. So my final answer is 24.7. And that's how I would... Um, keep my final answer. So that's addition and subtraction. We'll do the same thing for subtraction. What about multiplication? Well, multiplication is actually a lot even easier. So if you have, say, 2.3 times 46.5, I don't even have a calculator here. How you want to keep your final answer is your final answer significant digits has to be the same amount as the smallest one in your question. So in other words, once I have all of this calculated, um, I don't know what this is. Let's just say um, 93.25. I don't, I don't have a calculator, so that's maybe that's estimate. Since my smallest significant digit in my question is 2, this is 2 sig figs, and this is 3 sig figs, my answer has to be in 2 sig figs. I have to do whatever to this one rounded or whatever to make it into two sig figs. So the only way here is to make it 93 and just forget about the 0.25. Okay, let's try another example. Let's do um, 2500 times 2. Okay, I know the answer here. Now I know it's 2500 times 2 is 5000. Okay, and look at my smallest sig figs in my question. Well, there's two sig figs here because these zeros wouldn't count. Uh, and then there's one sig fig. So my final answer has to be in one sig fig. Is my answer in one sig fig? It is. That's the correct way. So that's a simple tutorial on sig figs of how to identify sig figs, add, adding sig figs, multiplying and dividing. So dividing, just quickly, dividing is exactly the same thing. So if I do 9 divided by, um, well, let's do 90 divided by 3, well, we would have one sig fig here. One sig fig here, final answer, one sig fig. If I were to have like 9,000 divided by 3, well, it's the same thing. Um, it would be, uh, what, 300 or 3,000? That's still one sig fig. Because you always, your final answer in multiplying and dividing, it's the easier one. You just look at the smallest sig fig and that's your final answer. Whereas your addition and subtraction, you do this cutoff method. There you go. So that's your little lesson on. Um, six weeks. So see you later.